Next up is we're actually going to take a look at some moving waves and measure some aspects of the wave. Now, uh, we are going to measure the wave period. What is the symbol for wave period? Capital T. Capital T. There you go. And we're going to measure the symbol, uh, sorry, we're going to measure the frequency of the wave. In physics, it's a lot easier than chem. We use the symbol lowercase f. So we're going to measure the period and the frequency of this wave. Just like we did a pendulum, we're going to measure 10t, and then we're going to determine t. So let's take a look at this applet right here. I'm just going to give it a start here. And you'll see there's a line right here. What we're going to do is we're going to time this every time it's, it crosses this line right here. So when the crest crosses that line, we'll start. What number will we say when we start timing? zero and then we'll time 10 of them and get your smartphone ready we're gonna try this right now we're gonna time 10 full periods make sure you start with zero whenever you're ready you can begin Okay, I got 10 full periods there. And go ahead and finish up there, get your 10th period in. Okay. All right, what are you guys getting for 10T? Okay, uh, is anyone else getting 16? I'm, I'm not getting that at all. Okay, that may be it. We may have a, a slow a slowness issue here. Uh, okay, so what I got was, uh, raise your hand if you got 16. Raise your hand if you got 19. That's what I got. Okay, so we're about split in the middle there. This may be changing speed. Um, so let's, I guess, split up split the difference here and call it the average of 16 and 19 is 17.5. Uh, let's call it that. Okay, so... Uh, Let's just say here that we got 17.5 seconds for 10t. What is the period? Yeah, you just divide by 10, 1.75 seconds. And then how are we going to figure out the frequency of this wave? You 1 over the 1 over the period. So go ahead and divide 1 divided by 1.75 seconds. We'll get the frequency. What do you get? Okay, so I'm getting 0 0.571. And what are the units of that going to be? Hertz or per second. Cycles per second is what that is. Cool. The next part we have is probably one of the most important things we're going to do in the whole lecture. Uh, it is going to be to calculate uh, the wave speed, okay? So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna find the wavelength for several, uh, for, for the wave we just measured the, uh, uh, the period of. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick up this ruler, like so, and where could I put it so I could measure the wavelength of this thing? Yes, yeah, from crest to crest. And there is the, I'm going to line that one right, the crest there, that's zero. And what are you getting for the wavelength of this wave? 7.5 centimeters is our exact wavelength for that wave. So we're going to go back to this, and we're going to fill in lambda is 7.5 centimeters. 7.5 centimeters. Now, uh, we can, with the information we already have, we can actually, believe it or not, figure out what the wave speed of that wave was. Now, let's figure this out. What's the general formula for speed? Assuming the speed stays constant, we can just measure what over what? Distance over time. So delta x over t, or 
Uh, delta X over delta T is the general term of doing that. Now, in this situation, let's look back at our demonstration. I'm going to restart it. In one period, how far does this wave move? So in other words, when I start right there and I end right there, in one period, how far did it move? It moved one wavelength. So notice that for, in general, I can just call this the wavelength over the period for a wave. Wavelength over the period is a completely legit way to get the wave speed. However, we tend to use another way of writing this, which I'm going to show you right now. This is called the master equation for waves. And it is true that the speed is lambda over t, but if I wanted to do it as a multiplication instead, I could do the wavelength times what? <coughs> times the frequency. This right here is the master equation for waves. V equals lambda f. And I'd say for uh, if you're going to do a wave problem, there's a good chance you're going to use this equation. V, the wave speed, is lambda times f. Now let's go ahead and use this information we've already measured to calculate the wave speed of our wave. Right here, we have the frequency of our wave. And right here, we have the wavelength of our wave. To get wave speed, all we need to do is multiply lambda times f, or the wavelength times the frequency, 7.5 centimeters times 0.571 hertz, giving us 4.28 centimeters per second. Notice that centimeters times hertz, hertz being just one over seconds, gives us centimeters per second. What you wouldn't get by looking at this equation is this. The wave speed depends entirely on the medium. The only way you can change the wave speed in general is by changing the medium. And this actually works for light too. It works for sound, it works for light. If you, uh, sound travels way faster through water. That's why sonar works so well. Uh, it travels like a, uh, through air, it travels about uh, 340 meters per second. I think it travels about three times as fast through water, maybe more than that. Uh, so you cannot change the wave speed by changing this, nor by changing that. You cannot change the wave speed by changing the frequency. And proof of that is, if I talk with a high voice, is the waves getting to you faster or slower or neither? Neither. It, it would be horrible if you heard the high notes of, the, of a band playing before you heard the low notes. S concerts would sound horrible. Luckily, all the frequencies travel at the same speed. In an unchanging medium, what would happen if, so here V, that's got to remain constant. What would happen if I made the wavelength really long? That's a super big wavelength. What would happen to the frequency? It would have to be a very, sh uh, very low frequency. The V is not going to change no matter what I do to the wavelength. Similarly, V stays the same if I made the frequency super high, super high frequency waves. What would happen to the wavelength? They would have to be very small. What's important to uh, understand is that this does not mean that if you increase the wavelength, the speed increases. It doesn't mean that at all. It also doesn't mean if you increase the frequency, the speed increases. What it means is that these two are inversely proportional to each other. The bigger the wavelength, the smaller the frequency. The bigger the frequency, the smaller the wavelength. So only thing that affects the, uh, the speed is the, uh, is the medium. If you are remaining in the same medium and you increase the frequency, what are you going to change also without even trying to? You will decrease the wavelength lambda. So that is what will change. Wave speed will not change. This simulation is a demonstration of how the wavelength nor the frequency affect wave speed. I'm just going to get a wave started, a traveling wave on this spring. And as you can see, uh, I'm getting this uh, oscillator to move up and down at 
0.4 hertz. So I got that wave going there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start another oscillator at the same time that has its wave going on the same spring, but at 0.8 hertz. Double the frequency. Well, with double the frequency, notice that both of these waves are keeping up with each other. They're going the exact same wave speed or wave velocity. What's different is that the one with the higher frequency has a shorter wavelength. Similarly, if I use the same spring, but this time make it a lower frequency of 0.2 hertz, then I still get the same wave speed, but notice that now my wavelength is longer. A lower frequency means a greater wavelength. So how can I change the wave speed? Well, there's only one way to do that, and that's by changing the medium. Let's see what happens when I do that. I'll go back to my 0.4 hertz wave, but this time I will change the tension of the spring by increasing it slightly. Notice that the wave speed in fact does speed up when I increase the tension. Of course, changing the wave speed also changes the wave length because I'm keeping the frequency the same, but the main point here is that I can only change the wave speed by changing the medium in some way.